Okay, welcome everybody. This is, seminar is going to be about getting to the Bahamas. Since most likely most of us are currently stuck in Florida somewhere waiting for the weather to change. So I think it's only appropriate that we should start with a discussion on the weather. By the way, just to let you know, um, where's my share screen function here? Zoom share. There we go. You should you should be able to see the um, the uh, the webinar uh, material now. Um, that picture is me on entering the Bahamas on my first trip. We've been going since two thirty or three in the morning, crossing over to Bimini from um, No Name Harbor, which is where I'm at at the moment. Uh, I was pretty much exhausted from a combination of stress and and just having been awake for a long time. But it was really great to finally get over there. And of course, what I was fleeing was what you see on the right hand side of your screen. My boat in the snow, um, frozen over water, which is not my idea of a good time. We still have people coming in, don't we? Okay, great. Um, and the Bahamas is everything. I mean, the Bahamas, I think, is for the most of us. It's the dream that we all kind of look at um, when we're talking, when we're thinking about going cruising. It's the place that most of us, especially on the East Coast, of course, want to go to. And the Bahamas is everything you've ever dreamed of, and, and quite possibly more. It's beautiful. It's If you've been there before, you're sitting there nodding your head, but it's it's beautiful turquoise waters like you see in the back of me in that photograph there. Um, it's warm, it's sunny, the people are nice, it's it's relaxing, it's easy cruising as well. And and the nice thing about it for those of us who are sailors, you can generally sail from island to island, even if you're only doing two and a half knots because there's no wind, it's still worth doing. Now, as we go through today, what I wanted to mention that if you have any questions, text me at the number that you see below on the screen, or uh, you can text me using Messenger on Facebook if you want. Um, this number would probably be the easiest thing, or you can use the chat function here in the um, here in the um, in the uh, app. Now, I should ask something. Something here says not seeing the photos. Uh, is that the case? Are we? Um, you should be able to see everything without a problem. Somebody want to comment there? Okay, great. Somebody just told me they can see it. Okay, so let's, um, <laughs> Kristen, I hope you can't see everything. Okay, good stuff. Um, let's move on then to the next, uh, the beginning. First, I think, whoops, okay. There we go. Let's talk about the weather. Um, Cass just told me that um, it's blowing like stink at Key Biscayne, and she's uh, just one uh, little uh, inlet up from me. I'm in uh, No Name Harbor. The and yeah, it's blowing like stink here too. Luckily, it's a well-protected location. So while I can feel the boat rocking back and forth, uh, we're well anchored. There's only about, geez, there's only nine boats in here, believe it or not. If you've ever been to No Name Harbor, you know that's something odd. There's actually more boats outside of us than there are inside here, surprisingly enough. <clears throat> now, the picture you see here is the windy uh, forecast taken as of, um, okay, Patrick, you mentioned you have no audio. That's going to be a problem on your end, I believe. Uh, check your um, check your um, your your menu at the bottom if you have a menu on the bottom for your your Zoom application, uh, or check your your phone or computer, whichever you're using. Okay. Anyway, moving on. This uh, picture of the uh, winds was taken about four o'clock or so this afternoon, so it's not very old. And as you can see, we have some sporty looking stuff happening out there in the Gulf Stream. Now. What I'd like to do is to show you exactly what it's going to look like over the next few days. And hopefully this thing is going to work the way I want it to work. There it is. Okay, this is Thursday. And as you can see, it's moving on through to Friday. The winds are still staying strong out of the northeast, meaning not good conditions for crossing. Now we're into Saturday, still well over the 20s. This is just the sustained winds. I'll show you the gusts in a couple of minutes. On Saturday, it's up to 30, 31, 32, 34. It's going to be pretty. And then it swings into the south. And you might think to yourself, hey, maybe there's a small window for me to get across there when it goes into the south on Saturday. And then Sunday, it's into the west and northwest. We'll show you what that's looking like in just a minute. <clears throat> okay. As this moves on, you'll see that the weather is not significantly changing 
uh, as in terms of the direction, it's out of the north all the way through to at least next Thursday. I didn't go any further because it was just too discouraging. Whoop. Okay. This is the gusts. Now, the gusts today in the Gulf Stream are running at 44 knots, 43 knots. That's tomorrow, still over 40. Those are the gusts. Can you imagine being out there in the Gulf Stream in those kind of conditions? So if you think things are rough now where you're anchored at, um, then you know, obviously you're going to appreciate uh, taking a look at this. Now we're through into Sunday, still wild conditions. Even out of the south, the gusts are up to almost 50 knots. Moving into Monday, they're now under 30, but not by a lot. And then moving on to Tuesday, we're still looking at some pretty wild weather here. Okay. So let's move on to the next. Let's move on to the next. Let's look at, this is the, the waves in the Gulf Stream. Now this afternoon, the waves were 14 feet out of the Northeast, which is bad enough, but take a look at the period that's written up right underneath that. Now, for those of you who don't understand this, what you generally want to have a nice smooth sail when you're out in the ocean is you want, whatever the waves are, you want the period to be double that. Now, what this means, is that your boat is going to, going to be going up 14 feet and down 14 feet in a period of eight seconds. Whoop, okay, hang on. Let's, let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so there's Friday. We're now in 13 feet on an eight second period. Still pretty nasty. It's going down a bit. It's 12 feet on seven seconds, 11 feet on seven seconds. We're going to Saturday, 10 feet on seven, nine on seven. Still not fun. Now we're at 10 feet on seven. We're moving into Sunday with the weather kind of moderated a bit, but it's still 13 feet on seven seconds. That is not, trust me, that is not good conditions. Now you get down to six feet on five seconds. That's still rough. Okay. Sometimes this thing is more of a nuisance than anything else. Okay. Let's move this way. I can't move it ahead, can I? Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, you get the message there. Um, the weather is is just wild and it's going to remain wild. And even when you get some weather out of the south, as we saw on Sunday and Monday, and out of the west, the waves out there are still way more than what you want to be involved with. That is <laughs> that's crazy stuff out there. I'm I'm quite happy to stay here in No Name Harbor. Uh, Marcus, to answer to your question, yes, you want the period to be, the, the longer the period is in relation to the height, the more flat the water is going to be, the more comfortable. Now, Mark Hillary asked me in Windy App, which weather model should we choose? Uh, I'm going to get into that a little bit later, okay, so I'm not going to answer it for you right now. Uh, Kristen, yes, we should be looking at least two to one. That's going to be the best bet. Okay, so moving on to the next thing. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, if you want, you can also email me directly at sailtothesun.com. There's a, a message feature there. If for any reason I cannot get to your questions before the end of the hour or I don't see them, I'll text you directly or email you directly with an answer or I'll include it on the Sail to the Sun website. Okay, any more questions there before I move on? Not yet. Okay, now a quick introduction to the Bahamas for those that aren't familiar. There are over 700 beautiful islands and it covers an area of 180,000 square miles. Technically, the Bahamas fit in a box about 400 miles square between latitudes 20 and 28 degrees north and longitudes 72 degrees and 80 degrees west. Uh, there's currently a population of around 400,000 people. Okay, so it, it's and it's a it's a lots and lots of room to go sailing and enjoy yourself. There is what I'm saying. Okay, <clears throat> to give you an idea of where the Bahamas is in relation to everything else, from Florida, whether you're in Miami or um, up in West End, um, not West End, in West Palm Beach, you had about 48 to 52 nautical miles to cross over. Uh, if you are down in the lower Bahamas, down in Ragged Island, and you want to go to Cuba, it's 65 nautical miles. If you're going from Great Inagua and you want to go to uh, um, uh, Luperon, you're talking 150 nautical miles. And if you're going from Luperon to uh, Puerto Rico, you're talking 200 nautical miles. 
a lot if if that is if the uh, the BVIs are your your eventual destination. A lot of people, of course, take what we call I sixty five. They just head straight east in the Atlantic Ocean until they get to uh, a line of longitude sixty five degrees west, and then they just go straight south. So it just depends on where you're going. But this gives you an idea. Those blue arrows up there indicate the usual direction of the wind in the the late fall, winter, and early spring season. As the years, as the season goes around, the winds tend to go more east and then into the southeast. Okay, crossing the Gulf Stream, which is of course everybody's big worry. Now we've seen from the uh, windy forecast why you don't want to be crossing the Gulf Stream anytime in the next week. What the Gulf Stream is, it's a powerful call it a river of water between Florida and the Bahamas. The one thing you don't want to do is you do not want to cross with any strong northerly component because, of course, what happens is you have the winds kicking up against the waves, or against the current, and that creates large waves, as you saw. <laughs> this, this was written a number of years ago. You're likely going to have to wait, and as you saw, we're going to be waiting at least a week to 10 days before it's possible. You might as well plan on spending Christmas in, uh, in Florida. I don't see that changing. When you cross, your goal is to try and get the stream behind you, if at all possible. And the reason for that is that getting the Gulf Stream behind you, or even if it's on your your um, your aft quarter rather than on the beam, means you're going to get a much more comfortable ride. Any wave action will be helping to push you forward rather than rocking you sideways. Now, any of you who know Dave Skolnick from the Seven Seas Cruising Association, if you ever get an opportunity to hear his Gulf Stream presentation, it is excellent. He is the man. He knows what he's talking about there. It's well worth it. Um, <clears throat> but the biggest thing I can tell you about the Gulf Stream and crossing is, as we're all learning, you're, <laughs> you're going to have to be patient, aren't you? Because you're not crossing for a while. And I've seen waits of up to three and four weeks where the, before the weather finally calmed down, especially at this time of year, uh, before the weather calmed down enough that people were actually able to comfortably and safely uh, cross. Okay, now charts. Since you're going to be waiting around for a while, if you don't have the right charts, you now have an opportunity to go purchase the right charts. The best charts in everybody's, in most people's opinion, uh, are the Explorer charts. And I recommend that you pick up co printed copies. They, there are three, I believe, different uh, sets, the near Bahamas, the far Bahamas, and, and basically the central Bahamas. Um, those charts will give you all the information that you need in terms of cruising in the Bahamas. Now, since most of us are into electronic charts, Explorer charts, as I mentioned, are preferred for accuracy. Your older Garmin chart, pl chart plotters have those charts. Uh, in fact, I have an older Garmin chart plotter that I keep on board strictly for that reason. When I go to the Bahamas, I take that Garmin and I put it in place of my B&G chart plotter so that I'm using Explorer charts. Now, Aquamap uses Explorer's charts. Navionics, if you have a unit that uses Navionics, they upgraded their Bahamas charts in 2022. But there's mixed opinions on all of these, and especially on Navionics, on just how good or how accurate they are. It's especially important. I think we had somebody just try to join there. Hang on a moment. Nope. Okay. Um, where was it? It's, it's, it's particularly important to uh, to have updated charts, the most recent possible. Uh, Aquamaps, of course, is always good for that. Uh, and as I said, there's um, there's mixed messaging on, on how good Navionics are, for example. Um, what I recommend you do is carry both paper and electronic charts. Um, electronics, of course, have been known to fail in the past. Um, make sure that you use your eyes and your common sense. And when I say use your eyes, what I'm saying is I want to learn to read depths, the depths of the um, the water by the color. And this is just a skill that you'll pick up with a bit of time. Um, when you're crossing over from the U.S., you will notice that the, the, the water color is a deep, deep blue. And if you remember your mom's um, Noxzema bottle when you were a kid, that deep blue of that glass in the Noxzema, that's the color of the, the deep ocean. As you get closer in, the water starts to turn to a, a real aquamarine um, turquoise type blue. And typically when it's turquoise, you're dealing eh, 12 to 20, maybe 30 feet at that point. Um, what you want to avoid is water that looks excessively yellow or brown. 
Uh, and the reason for that is you're getting into significantly shallow water there. And it becomes fairly obvious, you know, as you're cruising through the Bahamas, you'll be looking at your depth sounder, um, look at the color of the water that you see, and you'll start to relate them. It'll start to become very, uh, very instinctive as you move along. The important thing, and I, I really need to make a, um, thanks, Bruce, I'll make a moment. Um, the, the point I want to make is you've got your chart or your chart plotter, but don't stare at the damn thing which some people do. Look at the water. Pay attention to the water because that's where things are happening. Uh, it's not like going down the ICW where you're you're in a, a narrow, confined area. Typically, uh, if you're on the banks, you're going to be looking at, at depths of 12 to 20 feet most of the time. And the only thing you really want to watch out for are going to be um, coral heads. And those appear as a, a dark a dark blotch in front of you and are not hard to miss if you're paying attention. Okay, uh, Bruce Bain tells me that TZI Boat App, which is Fruno uses Explorer's charts as well. Thank you. Um, Kristen's iPad. Uh, yes, uh, don't worry about taking notes. It will be available online later. Okay, so, but thank you very much for taking notes. Um, new pump out. Oh, thank you, Cass. Um, okay, another note from Jason Spitz. Okay. Jason tells me that he's found that the Navionics charts have gotten better, but Explorer is still the standard. Uh, we use both together when there's a disagreement, uh, and we use this as a sign to be careful. Okay, cool. Whoops. Okay, bear with me, folks. Okay, here's Aquamaps, and this is what Aquamaps looks like for those who don't have it. Uh, it's easy to use. It's a great little program, great little system. Very low cost, it's good for accuracy, and it has lots of supplementary information. For example, uh, let's say that you're at Chub Key on your way down to Exumas. <clears throat> you can click on the Waterway Guide Anchorage for Chub Key and get all the information and reviews from people who have been there. So excellent, excellent information from people who have actually done the trip. Uh, Aquamaps provides very good support from uh, the, the uh, it's an Italian name, Giorgio Gigini or something like that. Uh, and Aquamaps works really well if you want to use it as a backup plotter on your iPad or on your uh, your your tablet. Oh. Now, crossing strategies. This is, of course, what we all really want to know about. Okay. If you're going to the Abacos, a lot of people leave from Palm Beach and go to the West End or Memory Rock. Now, that's great if you're running a trawler. If you're running a sailboat, it's not the best procedure, and I'll get into that in just a moment. But Palm Beach to West End is 54 nautical miles in a straight line. It's at 102 degrees magnetic. That means that you are running slightly against the Gulf Stream, which is going to slow you down significantly. Now, for a powerboat, that's not so much of a big deal because they've got big engines. Um, they can plow through this sort of thing. But for a sailboat, um, I boat, I saw that. Um, let me get, you know, can you just chat? Chat, can you just type your answer down there for me? Or you type your question for down there for me, and I'll get to it in a moment. Um, anyway, as I was saying, if you're running against the Gulf Stream, it will slow your boat down significantly unless you're a power boat. Uh, in that case, you're just going to be spending more money on fuel to get across. Palm Beach to Memory Rock, which is slightly no going slightly north, getting the stream behind you a little bit, is 49 nautical miles. And the actual route to West End is, is going to be long and slow if you're leaving from, from Palm Beach. Okay, where was we? Um, okay, I saw a hand, that, but I'm not sure how to go about grabbing that. Okay, we'll get to it in a minute. Okay, next. The advantage of clearing it coming to West End, there's both an anchorage and a marina. It's very easy to clear in. You just type. The um, the customs and um, and um, immigration is right there. There's a lovely restaurant. You can get fuel, diesel, and gas at both places. Uh, West End is not cheap. That's worth uh, knowing if you're on a budget. Some of, <clears throat> pardon me, some of the disadvantages when you leave West End and go onto the channel, it tends to be shallow for the first couple of miles. If you're six feet, uh, you want to be going through at least half tide or or closer to. Uh, uh, high tide before uh, making that part of the trip. Okay, memory memory rock, if you're clearing it, uh, clearing it, if you're coming across at memory rock, there's no anchorage, there's no nothing. It's just a, a buoy. 
It is a deep water entry, however, to the bank. So if you have a deep draft boat, that's the way you're want, going to want to go. The disadvantage here is that after having made it that far, you still have got 50 miles to go to Great Sail Key, which is your first tenable anchorage. So be if you're planning on going there, you should be planning on a, a long run. You're going to be doing, well, I guess a little over 100 miles from Palm Beach. Okay, from onward to the Abacos, once you're clearing at West End, you can marine or anchor out, as I mentioned. Um, from there, you can go up to Mangrove Key. I was talking about this with somebody just the other day. Mangrove Key is a nice anchorage, but you want to be there only in very settled weather because there's no protection of any kind. Um, there's nothing. There's just a small, uh, small mangrove, mangrove key. Um, preferably, what I will typically do is I will move on to Great Sail Key over at the right-hand side. Now, the advantage of Great Sail Key is that if the weather is rough, for example, the weather that we're experiencing right now, uh, I was just chatting with somebody um, a day or so ago, two days ago, I think it was, and they're in the bite. I don't know if, if my cursor shows up, but they're in the bite here at Great Sail Key, and that is really, really well protected from north, from east, from west, and from the southwest, okay? And if you get high enough up in there, you also have a certain amount of protection from the southeast. If it's settled weather, then you can go on to the northeast side of uh, Great Sail Key, and it's, it's a nice anchorage there. It's possible to go ashore if you need to walk a dog or you just want to stretch your feet. Okay. From here, you will be running on to uh, Treasure Key, Spanish Key, Little Marsh Harbor, um, as you can see here. And you can clear in at, at any one of those locations. Once you've cleared in, of course, you can go hog wild on Pig Beach. Now, not everybody knows it, but there's actually a Pig Beach in the Abacos, which is fairly close to Green Turtle Key. Now, the smart way to do it if you're on a sailboat is rather than cross from Palm Beach, run the extra day down to Fort Lauderdale, okay? And cross from Fort Lauderdale to West End. Now, the reason this is better, it's 68 nautical miles instead of 52, but you're running at a course of 66 degrees magnetic. What this means, as I mentioned earlier, is that you've got the you've got the any wave action on your stern quarter. What that means is it's going to be a faster ride because you've got the Gulf Stream pushing you, and it's typically an easier ride. I was crossing one time a number of years ago, and um, there were three freighters coming uh, coming north on the Gulf Stream, and I was closer to them than I would have liked. So I turned south to clear away from them, and my speed went from five and a half knots to three knots, actually a little bit under three knots. And that wasn't going to allow me to accomplish what I wanted to do. So I turned and started heading north, and my speed immediately shot up to over eight knots. So the difference in the Gulf Stream is that significant. Now, if you're going across to Bimini, um, You'll probably be leaving from Miami from No Name Harbor, which means running down a little bit south of Key Biscayne. It's 45 degrees or 45 nautical miles, pardon me, and a 91 degree run. So you're pretty much running at right angles to the Gulf Stream here. If you go a little further south, though, to Angelfish Cut, you can run to Bimini at a course of 55 nautical miles or at a, at a distance of 55 nautical miles and 72 degrees, which again means that you're going to get the Gulf Stream behind you. Now, a lot of, not a lot of people, but people who go further into the Keys, um, they could leave from Rodriguez Key, which is further south than what this picture shows. Uh, they'll get an incredibly fast ride up, uh, and it'll be a little bit longer than running from Angelfish Cut, but not a lot, and it will be a fairly comfortable ride because you're running with the Gulf Stream almost the entire way. Okay, data sources for the Gulf Stream. You have the NOAA, uh, you have... Um, other sources like RADS, uh, uh, RADS, you have GRIBS that are available from the RTOFS, which is a forecast at saildocs.com. Um, also the sea temperature, look for the sea temperature. That will tell you the first number of things. <laughs> Kristen just asked me, so what I hear you saying is it's better to go south to head north. Exactly, Kristen, that is exactly what you want to do. The further south you go, the more benefit you're going to get from the current of the Gulf Stream and the easier the ride you're going to get in most conditions. Okay, entering Bimini. For those who have been going to the Bahamas for a while, I'm starting to think I should have put some rum in that. My voice is going. Okay, for those who are old timers to the Bahamas, 
they remember the, the range that you used to enter. And the range is down here in these dotted lines entering towards South Bimini. What you would do is you line up, and I think it was a stick or a palm tree and a, a back range. And you would come into that until you're about 20 yards off the shore. You would then hang a left, and you would then follow up into uh, North Bimini and into Allistown. Um, now, since the building of um, the, the resort, which was a number of years ago, of course, they blasted a, a route through the, the reef a little bit a bit a little bit north of where the range was, and they have it marked with buoys. So it makes it very, very easy. Presuming the buoys are on station and they are not always on station. So make sure that you check before going over so you don't end up in a situation where where you're you're not running in, in and following the um the the proper course. Whoops, okay. Now sorry about that. You want to watch the colors of the waters, as I mentioned. And something that I didn't mention a bit earlier, in the Abacos, what you'll find out is that the water tends to be more of a darker green color. It's less of that gorgeous turquoise that you see in the in the Exumas. Not the Exmamas, as I misspelled or I just noticed. As you're coming into Bimini, especially in the early morning, watch out for traffic because there are a lot of sport fish. It's a... It's a real quick run over from Miami, and there's a lot of people who run over in these small 25, 28 foot fishing boats uh, to go do some fishing in the Gulf Stream. You'll also on occasion see the, the mail boat. Now, VHF rules, we're used to um, hailing on channel six, 16, and then uh, moving to another channel. It doesn't work that way in the Bahamas. People chat on whatever channel they happen to be on, and 16 is just another channel as far as they're concerned. There's the mail boat. Okay, in Bimini, I've been there many, many times. Um, only once was I told by the customs guy that I, I needed to tie up before coming in to see him. Um, typically, I've just anchored out and then rowed ashore and gone in to see them. Now, when you clear in at Bimini, you can clear in either at the um, the big game, um, the American Big Game Club, uh, and then they'll send you across the street to the other office to do your immigration. Um, so you can type at the government dock, as I did here, or you can type at one of the marinas. Um, or as I said, you can anchor out. You can also, if you want, and it's not a weekend, you can also go down to the, the casino and resort at the very, very end of Bimini, which is several miles further down. Anchor out there or type at the marina, and you can clear in there. Now, if it's a Saturday or Sunday when the cruise ships are coming through, you don't want to do that because it's going to be extremely busy. But any other day of the week, they sit there, they have nothing to do. So it's real, real easy to clean in there. Clear in there, pardon me. Now, in the recent years, the Bahamas clearing and procedure, you can now do it all online. Uh, or if you are not keen on doing it online, you can do it in person. The Bahamian professional, it's always a pleasure to deal with them. I've never once ever had an issue with them in any way, shape, or form. Um, Make sure that you have your passports and your boat documents handy. Uh, that will help the procedure a great deal. But ultimately, what you'll find out find out when you arrive is that it's quick and easy. Back in, I guess it was 2020, 2021, I forget now. Um, it was quick and easy. Uh, they're really amazingly well organized for a small country. Okay. The entry procedures, as I mentioned, have changed a lot, but their website gives you all the information you could possibly want. They answer all the questions such as what do private vessels need to enter? Do you need a permit to fish process? What should I do if I have a firearm with me? Of course, of great importance to Americans who like to travel with a firearm. Uh, bottom line, by the way, for firearms to answer that question, most weapons are permitted in the Bahamas. Uh, however, you have to count and account for every round of, of ammunition that you have and you had better have the same number when you leave. Uh, there are some, uh, some entertaining stories about people who decided they want to do a little bit of planking while they're in the Bahamas and then had to explain uh, why they did not have the same. Bob, um, Bob mentions that I have not mentioned the need to account for set and drift when calculating your course to cross. Bob, that's getting a little bit beyond the, um, how do I phrase this? That's getting a little bit more technical than than um, what I want to get into in a, in a seminar of this length. Um, there, 
Okay. There are instructions available on calculating set and drift. And if anybody's really interested in it, I'll actually do a seminar on that later down the road, since we are going to have a week or 10 days more to discuss this sort of thing. Um, what Bob's talking about, by the way, folks, is set and drift in order to calculate where you should head out as you're crossing the stream so that you'll actually end up where you plan on being. It's not quite as important when you run 20 or 25 miles south because what will happen is that the current will move you the, as much north as you cross over in a sailboat that you should end up pretty much where you plan to be. Okay. The website that you want is bahamas.com slash getting dash here slash et cetera, et cetera. Again, um, I can include that information uh, for anybody who wants it later on. In fact, what I'll do, oh, I can't do it that way. I was going to copy and, and paste it into the um, the, the chat folder, but I can't do that. Okay, your cruising permit, as you note here, you can get it either online or in person. There are two online sources, click to clear and the Bahamas site. When you go online to this, you can click on either one of those. It'll take you to that. Answer the questions, pay your money, and you're good to go. It also includes all the regulations. There is a video, several videos actually, explaining how to use the site to enter the um, enter the Bahamas and get your cruising permit. Um, it tells you when you should uh, provide your inbound declaration. It tells you what payment methods are acceptable. Lots and lots of information. It's really, really well done. Ah, Carl, thank you very much for doing that, folks. On the um, on the chat, he has included the uh, the website. Appreciate that. Okay. Moving next. Uh, <laughs> I love this one. They have something called a boater's fling, and they have not included the 2024 dates. But basically what it is, it's like a, a mini rally where they'll take you around to anchorages and things like that in the Bahamas to do some exploring. Um, I suspect, although I don't know that it's more geared for power boaters because they tend to be there more in the summer than in the, in the, the winter and spring like we are. Anyway, if you're interested in that, um, you can contact them on their website and find out if uh, they're going to be holding the, the boating flings again in 2024. This is a list of all the ports of entry, uh, and there's a lot of them. Now, the only ones that we're really concerned with, of course, are... Um, well, that's interesting. The only ones that we're concerned, of course, are um, um, Bimini and the West End, but... You can, a lot of people will, um, Bimini and they will clear in at, um, at, uh, Chubb Key or they'll run all the way down to Nassau and clear in at Nassau. If you're coming in from the Caribbean, there's all kinds of places you can clear in in the South Bahamas. And there are people who will bypass West End who will clear in at Treasure Key, Spanish Key, uh, Marsh Harbor, um, um, Green Turtle. Green Turtle is my personal favorite. It's nice and easy, uh, very, very relaxed. Uh, SV Simpatico tells us that the videos that I mentioned earlier on clearing in were definitely helpful. So keep that in mind if you're having any confusion, figuring out how the rules work. But uh, probably I should just get a sense of what they say. Whoop. Okay. Now, something to let you know, customs duty. If you have to bring anything in, Customs duty ranges anywhere from 0% to 210%. The average rate of duty is 30 to 35%. And specific rates of duty apply to items like petroleum and beer. The rates are outlined in the Tariff Act of 2002, which you can get on the web. The reason I mention this is if you have a boat part breakdown, don't assume just because it's a boat part that it's going to come in for free. It's going to come in clear of uh, value-added tax and duty. That's not the case. I um, had to bring in a depth sounder one time and I had it uh, brought down to Georgetown, flown into Georgetown, uh, had it uh, sent in from West Marine in Fort Lauderdale. It cost me as much to have it delivered plus duty and VAT, that tax, as what the, uh, the depth sounder itself cost. And the reason for that is that the only parts that you can bring in free of duty are engine parts, from my understanding. Now, the way to get around this and I'll deny I told that I'll, I'll deny I said this to anybody asked. If you have friends coming over, get in touch with them and have them bring the part over on their boat as part of their ship stores. Now, keep in mind also, whatever you bring in is ship's stores, okay? 
That means all the beer, all the booze, all the wine, all the food, all the parts, it's all ship stores. And that's how you declare it if you're asked to declare it. Now, if you want to extend your stay in the Bahamas, you have to have a valid passport, a valid landed immigration arrival or departure card. You know, those cards that you get at the airport uh, when you're when you're about to land, one of those cards. And you need a return airline ticket or evidence of returnability. Now, that would be your cruising permit. Make sure that if you have to leave the Bahamas for any reason and leave your boat there, that you bring a copy of the cruising permit with you because it becomes really difficult to get back if you don't. Okay. The other thing is that, and this doesn't really become an issue for people coming in by boat, but you have to satisfy the extension officer of your ability to sustain yourself while you're in the country for the required extended time. In other words, they want to make sure that you're not become, begin, not going to become a, a drain on their, their, the island's resources. Now, how about Fido or Manu or Polly the Parrot? Um, you can go through the procedure of, of clearing in by yourself and it's a complete nuisance. I've done it. And what I recommend you do is you go to www.bahamaspetpermit.com and you get a hold of Wellington. It's his business. And for $60 per pet per application, um, he will take care of your paperwork, everything that's required to bring your, 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 your pet into the islands. Believe me, it's a lot less trouble than doing it yourself. And it's not particularly much more expensive. So I recommend that you do this. Oops, there we go. Um, Wellington is at BahamasPetPermits.com, as I mentioned. Okay, internet and phone. This, of course, is, is something that everybody wants. Um, I recommend that you go to www.bealive.com. And alive is spelled without an E on it, of course. And purchase one of the MiFi's. Now you can get a, a SIM card for your phone or your tablet if you want, and that's fine. But what I recommend the, the MiFi for, or MiFi, however you pronounce it, nobody's ever explained it to me, is because you take this little thing um, and you charge it up and it's like a router, okay? You have it on your boat and you can run your, your tablet, your phone, you can run your computer, your laptop, I should say, off of it. No problem at all. Now, if you're going ashore, for groceries or for visiting or exploring, take the thing off, out of your phone, out of your, your boat, stuff it in your pocket, and it will work wherever you happen to be, and you'll have access to your phone um, with it in your pocket. Now, if you're in some place like Great Sail Key, which is fairly remote and where internet access is usually marginal at best, what you do is you take your MiFi. I've decided it's pronounced MiFi. That's how I'm going to pronounce it from now on. You take your MiFi, you put it in a plastic zip bag, and you add it, tie it to a halyard. And don't forget to put the download on it because you're going to drag this thing halfway or so up the mast, okay? And you don't want to have to go chasing after it, so you want a downhaul on your on your halyard. From halfway up your mast or better, it will pick up an excellent internet signal, and you should be able to have internet access, including, and, and I mean as good as streaming internet access, almost anywhere in the um, in the in the Bahamas. Now, I think the prices are a little dated. I think this for last year's prices, and they've gone up, I think, $95 for a 30-day, 125-gig usage package is um, is what the price is now. So I think the price has gone up by 5 maybe 10 bucks. I usually get the uh, the MiFi 90, which is a 30-day package. Uh, they consider fair usage to be 125 gigs. Um, I've yet to go over that, um, and it's a decent price. Now, some people will... Um, Will you choose to use their their phone carrier over there? I happen to have um, T-Mobile. Couldn't think of their name for a minute. I happen to have T-Mobile. They claim it's supposed to be fine over there. It's not. It's terrible. Uh, the best you're going to get is going to be is going to be three G service. Uh, bite the bullet and 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 get the uh, the be alive service. You'll find yourself a lot happier. Uh, EC Rider tells me that pets must have chips now. Okay, that's news to me. I didn't realize that they'd change that. Uh, so if your if your pet does not have a chip, make sure that it, it that you get one at the the vets. Um, EC Rider also tells me that makers makers um, um, cast is it makers flights or makers airline? I forget the full name of it. Anyway, they will fly parts in for thirty five dollars, and you have to put the VAT on it. 
Um, to, to makers there. Thanks, Cass. Um, and Captain Mark, thank you for that. Um, let me just scroll up and see what I'm missing. Okay, Bahamas.com getting your voting. Okay, yeah. Thank you again, Marcus, for adding the link for us. Appreciate that. Um, okay, what was next here? Oh, and somebody just mentioned that the uh, the 90 day MiFi is $95 now. Thank you. Whoops, okay. This was my first trip, and you can see I'm pretty pleased about it. And there's the lovely lady who signed me into the country. Still hadn't had any sleep at that point. I think I went back to the boat, had a drink, and passed out. Uh, Kelly, Starlink apparently does work over there, but um, I don't have Starlink. So, uh, and Captain Mark says yes. Okay, there's your answer. Thank you, Mark. And again, once you've cleared in, go hog wild. Have a great time. Okay, Jason tells us we used a live MiFi the last two seasons. Good option, but can be very slow to go and usable at times. That's not been my exper experience, Jason, but it's obviously different for all of us. Since COVID, with the move of many Bahamians back to the outer islands, the bandwidth has not kept up with the population plus increased cruising community. We've installed Starlink, and so far it's amazing, a real game changer. <laughs> we can watch this great Zoom, thank you, sir, uh, and not have hiccups, cost of 150 a month, and obviously that's plus the hardware. Marcus tells me I'm using Starlink right now, works outstandingly, and he works remote on Zoom meetings all day, and it works fine. Starlink's the way to go if you want to spend the money, obviously. Um, okay, from Bimini, you're on to Chub Key. <laughs> Excuse me. Chub Key is about 75 miles, uh, which means you're going to be doing an overnight here. Um, now, as you can see, you can go north of, uh, of Bimini and cross over from there to... to um, and cross over to the north, uh, the northwest channel. You can go from immediately under Cat Key, or you can go down as far as Riding Rock and get a, a north northeasterly course. But you're end, you're going to end up at the northwest channel at any event. What I usually do when I leave is I leave early in the morning from Bimini, and I will then anchor out at northwest channel. So I'm picking the calmest possible weather. Now, I move at least a quarter mile or more off the charted route and the reason for that is that you're going to have small freighters and small ships running through the northwest channel all night long you want to be well off the route and with a really good anchor light so that you're not going to be in any um any danger from being hit by them the interesting thing about anchoring out at northwest channel is that it's one of the few places in the world where you're going to be able to anchor out and not see land in any direction you're completely surrounded by water um what I'll typically do then after leaving Northwest Channel is I will get up the next morning and I will run to Chub Key, anchor out there or fuel up there at Chub Key and, and then either anchor out for the night or the rest of the day and the overnight and then run on to Nassau from there. Alternatively, you can run through down to uh, West End or Nassau or you can run down to um, Andros and, and clear in at Andros if you, want, if you haven't cleared in at Bimini. Um, if you have any sort of rough... If there's any sort of wind creating a rough weather and it's uncomfortable, there's an area immediately to the north of um, of the Northwest Channel where you have some small sand bores uh, and, and shoaly type areas. And um, where was I? I? I got distracted by a question there. Um, and you can actually anchor out in one of these areas and it will break down any channels. Uh, I didn't. I don't have a chart showing that directly. You can locate it very, very easily. Okay. Um, I had somebody just ask, for those using Starlink, do you upgrade to the global regional plan? Uh, Jason says, no, he's using regional without issue. Again, that's a Starlink specific question. And since I don't have Starlink, uh, I'm not the guy to ask for that. But obviously, we have people here who can't answer that, which is fabulous. Now, as I said, Bimini to the Northwest Channel is 65 nautical miles. The Northwest Channel to Chubb is 14 nautical miles. It's deep water all the way until you get to Chubb. And at Chubb, if you anchor out in Chubb, it's got one of the most gorgeous little anchorages I've ever seen. The problem is that, and unless this has changed in the last two years, or three years, I should say, um, they will not let you come ashore on the beach there. Uh, it's all private property now. Um, from the Northwest Channel to Andros is 22 nautical miles. Northwest Channel to Nassau is 49 nautical miles, and Chubb to Nassau is 36 nautical miles. Okay. Um, <laughs> Aaron here purchases his Starlink in Mexico for $450, and it's $75 a month. He's used it from Key West to Rio Dulce, Guatemala, with no problem and no extra charges. Um, 
one person I know who's not on the um, on this uh, webinar purchased his Starlink in um, Looperon, and he pays considerably less. Um, and I think it's, I think it might be as little as sixty dollars a month. He paid for the uh, the product. So if you're willing to purchase it out of country, you can get a significant saving on that. Uh, Jason, we're currently in Hopetown, Abaco, stormy with 25 to 40 knots. Starlink continues to work great. Tip for a live MiFi. Every couple months, top up with $1 in the app to keep your account active. That way you can use it every year return without having to go to live for a new chip. Uh, I wish you had told me that a couple of years ago, Jason, because I'm obviously going to need a new chip. Okay, moving on. Whoops. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Okay, passage considerations for the Bahama Banks. <clears throat> First of all, obviously the weather. Predominantly northeast winds at this time of year. Oh, interesting. Thank you, Captain Mark. You can check in at the fuel dock and Chubb, and you'll have to buy a day pass in the Chubb key app. Uh, Mark, how, about, how expensive is that? If I remember correctly, it's not cheap. Okay. Um, okay, weather we've mentioned is predominantly northeast winds at this time of year. If you want to get northwest winds and make your, your trip a little bit easier, you can leave on the back end of a norther, which are fairly regular. Uh, they will blow through every four to five days. As I mentioned, you anchor at Northwest Passage, and then if you don't want to anchor at Chubkey, which is a little bit to the east, uh, then, of course, you can run down to Nassau or West Bay. If you really feel you need more weather advice, you can consider a weather router. The guy that is considered the go-to guy is Chris Parker. Ah, okay. Captain Mark tells us that um, he's paid as little as $25 and as much as $60 for a day pass at Chubb Key. So I guess it just depends on who you're talking to from the sound of it. Once you get to Nassau, you've got a variety of choices. You've got Eleuthera. You can go up to Spanish Wells. Um, you can go over to Governor's Harbor. You can run down to the Exumas. So you've got a variety of choices in the best the best part about the Bahamas, the part I really love, there are no bad choices. It's all beautiful. Um, there are a number of places I still have to explore. I've had a number of people tell me Andros is really, really nice. I've never been. Uh, I've been to Eleuthera, but only briefly on a delivery a number of years ago, and I plan to go back this year and explore Eleuthera. If you're heading for the Exumas, a lot of people, when they get to Nassau, they want to head to, um, for example, Norman's Key, and they take a look in there. They have the Yellow Bank, which has got coral heads, and that's your straight route. Why not run directly south until you're below the Yellow Bank and then cross over, or again, run at about um, 135 degrees to Norman's Key? That way you avoid all the hassle of, of looking out for those, those coral heads. Now, provisioning is a question everybody's going to be different about what they, they want to provision with. What I like, you don't like. Um, what somebody else likes, you don't like. So it's it's a very individual sort of decision, and you have to figure that out for yourself. My source, well, if you go to, if you go to Facebook, you'll get over 100,000 results. So obviously, there's a lot of variety there. In terms of provisioning, you can go to their grocery stores, American-style grocery stores in Nassau in Freeport, and in March Harbor at Maxwell's, uh, also in Georgetown and Long Island. Uh, this picture below is going shopping in Georgetown. That's kind of fun because you have to go under that little bridge there. You swing to the left and there's a, a dinghy dock. That's also where you get your, um, your, your fresh water in Georgetown if you don't have a water maker. And for those who are not aware of it, I do sell Seawater Pro water makers. So if you're interested in getting a water maker, please touch base with me after the show or, or sometime in the next week. Okay. Your best resource for provisioning, and the ladies are probably familiar with this one, is theboatgalley.com. Carolyn Sherlock runs a superb site with lots and lots of excellent information on pretty much anything you want to know about provisioning. And she's got lots of other good advice there as well. She spent a lot of years in the Bahamas, uh, and she's very much a go-to person. Two things, I, three things I strongly recommend. If you are still using lead-acid batteries, be sure to bring along distilled water for your batteries, okay? That's a product that's difficult to find in the Bahamas. If you're looking for a decent insect repellent for no fumes, I recommend 
that you purchase. Uh, we used to call them big coils. Uh, you can buy them at um, at most um, dollar stores here in the U.S. Uh, there's just those green coils that um, you light up and they, they get all smoky. Those keep away noceums better than anything I have ever found. And if you're traveling with a pet, bring enough pet food for the length of time you'll be there. Pet food is simply... Pet food is simply something that uh, is not easy to get in the Bahamas. Somebody just threw... <laughs> Cass just recommend provision for beer in the U.S. And she's right. Beer is really expensive in the in, in the Bahamas. Um, although if you go to a, a, any sort of place that the locals go to, you can buy a bottle of beer fairly inexpensively, not really any more than you get in the U.S. Wine, for some reason, is not expensive in the Bahamas. Rum, of course, is cheap. Uh, but if you're, gonna, if you're a beer drinker, Bring as much beer as you think you'll need and save yourself some money. Uh, Captain Mark mentions uh, keep keep fresh ginger on board for nausea. There's a number of nausea uh, seasickness uh, remedies. Um, you'll just have to experiment and find one that works for you if you're if you're prone to seasickness. Jason notes that rum is cheap and also rice and pigeon peas. Oops. Okay. Next. Okay. Weather information. Weather information is typically available from NOAA, but not past Bimini or the West End, unless you've got a really good radio and antenna. Uh, you can get weather information on single sideband or ham radio via Chris Parker. Most people now get weather via online sources. You've got passage weather, you've got sail flow, you've got predict wind, my favorite, windy.com. If you have a DeLorme in reach, it has a weather option, okay? For, a, a, I think it's a buck they charge, you can click a, and get a weather forecast, and that's very, very, very handy. What you really want to do, however, is learn to predict your own weather. Watch the sky and learn the weather patterns. In the Bahamas during the late fall, winter, and into the early spring, you will get a um, a, uh, a, a norther going through. Oh, interesting. Uh, you'll get a norther going through about every four to five days. Now, if you're in Georgetown, you can tell when there's a norther coming because all of a sudden a whole bunch of boats will leave the anchorage that they're in and they'll go over to the other side of the, the, um, the harbor and they will anchor it in a different location. So when you see a bunch of boats moving, it's likely that they've seen a weather forecast telling them there's a norther coming. Uh, interesting name, hot pepper. Whoops, there we go. Hot pepper pula tells me that dryer sheets in pockets keeps no seams away. And that's a new one on me. I didn't know about that one. Okay, so you've got a variety of weather options. Uh, but as I say, the best thing, the biggest weather issue you're going to have to deal with in the Bahamas is going to be the northers. So learn to predict one yourself. And, you know, if one arrives on Friday, you expect another one by Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, I've mentioned Wendy. Um, and I put a lot of information on when, about Wendy on in, uh, earlier in this thing. So I'm not going to beat that horse with a, that dead horse with a stick. It's available as a phone app. It's available on your tablet. There's a paid version. Of lots of information. And it uses several different models. Now, that's one thing I want to get to. On Windy, you've got the ECM WF model, you've got GF model, you've got NAM. All that models are, for those who don't understand, my strong point, but all the models are, are, are different. Uh, they use different algorithms to predict the weather. So one might give you one result, another one might give you another. That is important is that when you go to Windy, click on ECM, ECM WF, which is what I've used through here most of the time, okay? You'll see one result. You go to the GF and you see a completely different result. Okay. Where this becomes where this becomes important is that if you see several different results on several different models, it means that the weather forecasters have got no confidence in their forecasts. What you're looking for is for a variety of different models to agree with each other or to be close enough that they might as well be agreeing. I'll get into that in just a second here. I mean, the best no CM repellent I've heard is no nat. No net is from nonats, N O N A T Z dot com. Okay. I'm learning lots of stuff today. Okay. Something's missing. Okay. I know what's missing. Okay. If you're going to get into spearfishing, fishing, or lobstering, be certain that you get your license when you clear in. Um, without the license, you'd be fishing illegally. I lost my chat window here. Show chat for you. Okay, hello. There we go. Okay. Um, now, dining out, 
um, dining out in the Bahamas, you can go to someplace like McDuff's on uh, Norman's Key. That's where the, the um, whoever that drug cocaine dealer was, his plane crash. It used to be a regular site, I guess, in the 70s where the, the druggies would fly their their cocaine and, and pot in and, and then distribute it from there. But it's now a, a, a lovely restaurant called McDuff's. Um, I couldn't get a hold of a current menu. The last time I was there, a hamburger was $25 plus a beer. According to, um, I think it was menus.com, the menu now runs from $31 to $51 uh, plus taxes and the gratuity. Um, for a hamburger, I find that a little pricey, but you know what? You'll probably want to do it just once anyway. Um, and it runs the gamut of, you can get a full meal for under $20 at the Three Daughters down in uh, in Bimini. And it's it's a good meal too. You can see what it looks like on the left-hand side there. Okay. Try some of the local um, coconut bread if you can. If you're in Bimini, you want to go to Nate's Bakery, which is up on Kings Highway. If you're in Great Harbor Key, which is a lovely marina in Great Harbor, uh, you can order um, coconut bread from them. You've always got a choice of sundowners on the beach. Um, typically, this one's in Georgetown. Georgetown has a really active cruiser's net that uh, comes on in the morning. And you'll find out everything that's going on there. Not so many cruisers nets in other locations, unfortunately. But people, you know, typically boaters are, are, are friendly. Start, they'll get together. You'll figure out what's going on. Whoop. There's a cruise ship entering Nassau. Obviously, uh, if you're under sail, you don't try and convince them that uh, you have right of way. Nassau Harbor is absolutely fascinating, by the way. If you do spend any time in Nassau, um, if you can, oh yeah, Potter's Key is a place where there's a bunch of funky local restaurants, um, and it's it's just over by the bridge. Uh, <laughs> Captain Mark just reminded me the drug dealer we were talking about for the um, Norman's Key was Pablo Escobar. It's probably a good thing that I can't remember the names of the drug dealers that were who were famous. Okay, this was at um, Staniel Key. Uh, every afternoon uh, when the sport fishermen come in, they start cleaning their fish and the um, all the local uh, nurse sharks come in to get a, a meal. There's a little close-up of them. They'll, they'll nose around your dinghy. It was funny because there were a bunch of uh, tourists, not boaters or cruisers, but tourists, who were hanging out there one day and somebody wanted a picture of them. So I took my... Um, my GoPro and I stuck my hand in the water beside the dinghy and I was I was photographing them for them, and they were like, oh "My God, look at big! You can't do that." Nurse sharks are pretty harmless, but uh, my whole attitude about that is, if there's nurse sharks around, there may be other sharks, and I tend to be cautious. Hope Town Lighthouse. This is a gorgeous stop. Uh, I think a couple of the people watching tonight, uh, at least one or two of them, are in uh, in Hope Town right now at this location. Uh, the view from the lighthouse in the background is absolutely fabulous and if you're in a storm this is an incredibly protected location okay mornings in hope town are now 30 dollars a night according to uh, jason spitz vernon's groceries is three dollars and 75 cents for a tomato 675 for a bag of 13 675 sorry for a bag of carrots 13 dollars and 75 cents for for a banana bread loaf um, there's also, and I, I forgot to mention this, and I, I, I'm going to have to look for the phone number for it. In um, the Abacos, there is a service run out of Marsh Harbor. Um, I think we had somebody else just try to join here. Nope, I guess not. Um, we had some, there's a service in, in the Abacos where you can order your groceries and they will deliver them to the dock. Um, provision, yes, provision heavy, Captain Mark says. That's right. Groceries especially are, are expensive. Um, in any event, uh, there's a service that will run the uh, groceries to your dock in the Abacos, and I found it quite convenient, and it's not hor horrendously expensive. There's a view in uh, Green Turtle Key. It's one of my favorite spots in the, uh, in the Abacos. It's just simply gorgeous. Great Guana Key. Uh, Nippers is back open. Nippers got taken out in Hurricane Dorian. It's a fun place to go on a Sunday. And as they say, it's better in the Bahamas, but it's gooder in Guana. 
And this was um, from a bar in uh, Staniel Key, I believe it was. If not Staniel Key, then possibly Georgetown. What's your hurry? You're here. And the reason that's important is because once you're in the Bahamas, don't rush. Take your time, explore, enjoy. Um, the only real concern you should have is avoiding any questionable weather. Uh, other than that, uh, enjoy the trip. I'm going to unmute now. Um, if anybody has any, and unmute everybody if I can figure out how to do this. Um, participants. Um, hello. Whoops. Okay, I'm sure there's a way to do this. I can't figure it out. What I want to do is give everybody a chance to ask questions if they have any. Um, okay. It's not letting me do that. Okay, if you have any questions, please pop them on the, um, please put them on the um, the chat here. <laughs> Cass asked me, what are we doing tomorrow night if it's still blowing stink like stink? Uh, Cass, I know you well enough that I can guess and I'm not going to say out loud. Um, I will, well, I, Aurora, uh, Aurora Drew, I will post the recording on the sailing and cruising site. Um, I won't have a link for a little while yet. Um, and if it's still blowing like stink tomorrow, I suggest that you buy a bottle of rum and you think Bahamian thoughts uh, so that you can get ready for the trip. Um, I will be crossing sometime in late January after the Toronto Boat Show. Uh, if anybody wants to hook up with me for a crossing or if you have any questions at all of any nature, if there's stuff we haven't covered, um, I can certainly answer your questions. Uh, what I might do is uh, see if I can get a hold of somebody who can do a weather webinar for us since we're going to have some time to consider these sorts of things. If that's the case, again, I'll, I'll make note of it on the Sailing and Cruising and Sailing and Cruising ICW websites. Um, what is the importance of a watermaker? Monique wants to know. Uh, a watermaker means that you don't have to worry about water. You don't have to carry jugs around and, and make your life difficult. Um, are winds blowing stronger in January than February or March? David, winds tend to scale down as the season goes on because the northers, of course, aren't coming through. Uh, what we're experiencing now are what are typically known as Christmas winds. Uh, I can't possibly imagine why that would be. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't like to go down until sometime in mid-March or later uh, because the weather's just, A, it's warmer, it's more pleasant, and the winds are not as strong. What do we got here on a standard dinghy? Let's say 8 to 10 feet. Uh, Mateo, 8 to 10 a 9.9 .9 horsepower on a dinghy that size is excellent. You don't need to overpower it. You're going to be go moving more than The only real big anchorages you have are going to be Georgetown, for example, where you're going to want a little bit more speed. Um, or if you're going out to do any um, any snorkeling, you might want to consider. But on an 8 foot dinghy, uh, a 9.9 .9 horsepower is probably as big as is really permissible or safe on it. Any other questions here that I'm missing? Uh, that's an interesting question. I'm sorry I can't answer that one publicly. Uh, I usually, I've crossed back as late, Emily. I've crossed back as late as July. If you're crossing back through the Abacos and you can catch July 4th in West End, it is a major party. They have a big, um, um, they have a big event there with parades and street bands and everything else. It was a whole bunch of fun. I, I, I really recommend if you can be there. <clears throat> You leave from Fort Lauderdale, where do you suggest the stage? Um, yeah, Fort Lauderdale is the problem. You can uh, stage in uh, North Lake. You can stage in South Lake. But really, I recommend that if you're going to Bimini, um, you run down to No Name. Uh, from No Name, if you can get down to Angel Fish, that's going to give you just a much better run. Okay, any more questions? Thank you. I appreciate being talking. Security. Karen Lee, yeah, let's talk about security for a minute. Bahamas is generally pretty safe, with the exception of Nassau and Freeport, which can be questionable. And that's just basically, a, a, I'm going to call it a big city problem, even though they aren't big cities. Um, but um, generally, the the basic responses apply. Don't carry a bunch of, don't wear a bunch of expensive jewelry or an expensive watch. Uh, don't wander around stumbling drunk. You make a target of yourself. Uh, generally, you will not have to lock your dinghy, except again in Freeport of the Bahamas. Um, most places are quite safe. Uh, Matthew, crossing from the Keys, I would suggest um, 
Rodriguez Key would be a good spot, or go a little further north to Ange Angelfish, Angelfish um, Creek. Mateo would explore the islands, electric scooter or electric bike. Either one would work. Um, I, I love. I just take a just bring a ten speed or a, a, a regular bicycle. Uh, car rentals are available on on most of the bigger islands, such as Luthra, um, out of Freeport, out of Marsh Harbor. Um, and a lot of islands, you can rent a golf cart. For example, Vimini, you can rent a golf cart if you want to do some exploring there. So there's lots of options available, and it pretty much is island dependent. Okay. <laughs> Better time to come back in the spring. I vote, I'll tell you what happens to me when I come back in the spring. I usually leave from West End, and I'm anchored out there. So you have to picture this. I'm anchored out in about 15 feet of water. I can see the starfish down below. It's beautiful. I can see the fish swimming beautiful turquoise clear water and i know that i'm coming back to the icw and i hate leaving truly hate leaving um uh anytime you can come back anytime a lot of people actually run over in the late spring early summer uh i would not be uncomfortable hanging out in the bahamas even into late july as long as you're watching the weather carefully typically you're not going to have hurricane issues until into august uh, Kraken asks, are there any issues using drones? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I've never um, I've never considered that. I'll have to look that up. How difficult is it to get visiting guests to the boat from different locations? Generally, Karen, um, if you're near one of the airports, Marsh Harbor, Georgetown, um, Nassau, George Freeport, not really an issue. Um, Basically, as long as you're near an airport, your airport, you can have somebody flown in. Usually, they will send you to the Bahamas, and then they'll take one of the regional air, airlines across. Uh, I vote, yeah, really July. I've I've been in uh, the Bahamas as late as July the sixth or seventh before crossing back over, and that was only because my uh, my um, visa had expired. Um, I would not panic too much about staying in the Bahamas until mid to late July, you know, with an eye on the weather. Kim. Um, if you would um, messenger me, um, you can messenger me or send me messages. Hang on, let me put this down here for you. Okay. Oops, why is that not shooting over? Hang on a second here. There we go. Okay. Oh, harg. Kim, I'm trying to send you a message. My email for um, my email for the watermaker is Wally at NorthChannelSailing.net, uh, and you can touch base with me online in any event for that for that if you want more information. Okay, folks, uh, if there's not any more questions, any more questions? Going once, going twice, three times. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, I'm going to give some consideration if there's enough interest in uh, having somebody do a weather seminar. Uh, it's not something I'll do because I don't consider myself knowledgeable enough about whether to do one, but I'll see who I can find who can talk about it. Thanks everybody, very much, everybody. Safe sailing. We'll see you in the Bahamas. Remember, it's better in the Bahamas. <laughs>